Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here. Now it's Easter, Easter brunch, Easter dinner. Are you planning on having a delicious lamb roast? But maybe you're a little intimidated by it, you're unsure of how to go about doing it. Well, today I'm gonna to share with you some tricks and tips in making the most delicious lamb roast. You really need to know those tricks, you guys. What I have in front of me here today, I'm using leg of lamb. And this is a boneless leg of lamb. I'm just gonna flip this over and show you guys. So the bone would typically run along the center here. And our butcher has removed the leg for us. You can certainly ask your butcher to do that if you really wanna try and do it yourself. It's not that hard to do. I'm gonna just kind of show you how to truss it so it's a nice uniform shape, which helps to encourage even cooking. So. What you need is some butcher's twine. This is cotton butcher's twine. Uh, you can buy this at any kitchen specialty store. They even have it in supermarkets on smaller spools. Grab a good amount here. And before I truss, I wanna do one thing. And this is really what you should do. You should season the lamb up with a little bit of salt and pepper. We're actually gonna create a marinade for this lamb so that it has even extra flavor, but I'm gonna season the inside with some salt and pepper. Be pretty liberal with the amount of salt that you use. You have meat here that's about three inches in thickness, so you need a good amount of seasoning to really penetrate into the meat and bring out all of those wonderful flavors. Salt and pepper. I'm gonna fold this back up now. And this is a four pound piece of lamb. And leg of lamb is pretty lean, you guys. It doesn't have a lot of fat to it. So you don't want to cook this for a very long time. We're looking to cook this till it reads about 130 degrees to 135 degrees with a digital thermometer. So this isn't a piece of meat that you would stew for a very long time or braise for a very long time because it doesn't have all of that connective tissue that maybe a shoulder of lamb would have. To begin trussing, I'm tying a piece of twine at one end. And what you wanna do is you wanna take the long end of the string like this. You want to loop it around your fingers and then you're gonna bring this under the roast shimmy it back about an inch and then you should be able to take this long piece here and all you do is you slide it back and forth and you want to compact the roast here with a good amount of pressure but you don't want it to be too too tight you want it to be a nice compact shape but not with too much force so you're going to basically repeat this process over and over until the whole thing is trussed and if you didn't really want to kind of do this method, if it's, if it's a little too difficult for you, you could certainly cut a bunch of little pieces of twine and you could easily just tie them up like this. But this is kind of the fast method and this is the method that a lot of butchers use because you're not wasting time cutting all these little pieces of twine. So shimmy back and forth. So now once you get to the very end here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the twine and you're gonna go you're gonna flip the roast. You're gonna bring the twine all the way around. You're gonna flip the roast again, and then tie these two together. Just tie it in a little bit of a knot, trim away any excess twine, and there you have a nicely trussed roast. Now this promotes even cooking, you guys. So it creates that uniform shape so that you know that it will take the same amount of time to cook this end as it will to cook this end over here. So transfer this into a resealable plastic bag and I'm going to get started on my marinade. Just going to give my hands a little bit of a wash before I do. I'm using really classic ingredients when it comes to lamb, a little bit of lemon. So this is the peel of two lemons that's been coarsely chopped here. I have two tablespoons of chopped rosemary, a little bit of salt and pepper. Of course, you always need salt and pepper, a quarter of a cup of olive oil, and then the juice of the two lemons. So just squeeze this in, give this a bit of a stir. Pretty easy, right? And now take your lamb, add one head of garlic, they're slightly crushed, and then the marinade. Zip this up. And then this goes into the refrigerator. Overnight is best. You can flip it halfway through so that the entire roast gets kind of flavored and permeated with those wonderful aromatics. So 
Our lamb, it's been marinated overnight, and you guys, whenever you're roasting a big piece of meat like this, you wanna make sure that you pull it out of the refrigerator for at least an hour, so that it has a chance not to come to room temperature, but just to take the chill out of the meat. Uh, you don't wanna start with a cold piece of meat in the oven, because what's gonna happen is that whole roast is gonna be super cold, the outside is gonna cook at a faster rate than the inside, so you're gonna end up with something very rare in the center, but an overcooked exterior. So I'm just taking some paper towels and blotting off some of the excess marinade here. That will really help to give a nice golden brown color to the outside of your roast here. Because again, if you have excess moisture on this, what's gonna happen, you're gonna create steam, and steam isn't gonna give you the color that you're looking for. So blot it off just with a paper towel like this, and now we're ready to roast the lamb. So I have my oven, it's preheated to 450 degrees, and I have my roasting pan, I'm gonna go get it, it has some potatoes in it. So I have two pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes. These are cut into about two inch pieces. And now what I'm gonna do is just kind of spread them out to the perimeter of the pan. So I'm gonna put a wire rack into the bottom of the pan here. And what this does is it helps to lift the roast up off the bottom of the pan and it gives some airflow around the roast, which will, again, it will help it to cook evenly. So this is going back into that 450 degree oven for about 15 minutes and then reduce the temperature down to 300 degrees for about 40 minutes. Our roast is out of the oven now. It's been in, again, in total, almost about 60 minutes. And now I'm going to add some asparagus to this just to kind of complete the meal a little bit. So this is a pound of asparagus. I'm gonna season it up with some salt and pepper, toss it with some olive oil, and then these get positioned around the roast and the potatoes, and this goes back into the oven, you guys. Again, it's at 300 degrees for about 20 minutes until the asparagus is cooked, it's tender, and the roast, you guys, needs to register about 130 degrees on an instant read thermometer. So back into the oven. All right, so our lamb, it's completely done. It's been out of the oven. And of course, whenever you guys are roasting anything and you want to serve it, you need to make sure that you let it rest for a little bit of time. It needs about 20 to 30 minutes to rest after cooking and before slicing so that all of those wonderful juices that are in the meat don't rush out. So that's what I have here. I'm going to take a pair of kitchen shears and you just want to remove the trussing here. You don't want to bite into any of the twine. And now to slice, you want to make sure that when you're slicing this, especially since it's the, the leg meat of the lamb, you want to do nice thin slices, nothing too thick. So take a nice thin blade. I'm using a carving knife here and thinly slice the lamb. This looks beautifully cooked. It's nice and rare. I can't wait here, you guys. So I'm gonna take a little bit of lamb and a few of these wonderfully roasted potatoes and some asparagus. So there you go, guys. Now, if you have any kitchen conundrums, use the hashtag kitchen conundrums and let us know what problems you're having and we'll solve them for you. Enjoy, guys.